How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this really cool, just crazy cube abstract design. It's really fun. It's all completely done in geometry nodes. So we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of 200 ready to use procedural materials compatible with both EV and cycles. Speeding up your workflow is important and with an easy system to apply and edit materials, you will be able to bring your renders to life a lot quicker. Change the roughness, details, and color of any material you want. There is a growing list of categories like wood materials, detailed paints, and some really awesome metallic materials. They are 100% procedural so everything is editable, giving you control of how you want your design to look. All updates are free upon purchasing, so head over to ducky3d.com and check it out. All right, so this is what we're making here today, just a crazy thing. So I'm going to go ahead and get a new Blender file here, and we'll get going. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything here in the scene and we're gonna get a plane. That's all we're really gonna need. And also get a cube, I'm gonna hit G, just kind of move it out of the way. We're gonna use that as the, kind of the only object we'll make for this model. So let's hop straight into geometry nodes and we're gonna make this happen. So the reason why I got a plane is we're really not even gonna use this plane. I'm gonna click new and then on the input, I'm just gonna delete that, which kind of deletes the plane. Shift A, we're gonna go here to the mesh pr primitives and we're gonna go and get in a cube. Plug that cube straight here to the geometry, and I'm gonna click the wireframe view so we can see what we're doing. So here on the vertices, I'm gonna leave it at two, but if you want, you can click and drag and subdivide this as much as you want. If you haven't used geometry nodes before, this gives you this editability after clicking away. Otherwise, with um, destructive workflows like Blender has been using, you couldn't do that. So we'll leave it there, and we're gonna go ahead and do an instance on points. So INST instance on points. This the old way was point instance or something like that, but now that we're using fields, it's way different. I actually like it like this. And then we're gonna go ahead in the outliner, take that cube, whoops, click back on the plane, just drag the cube straight into your scene. So we're gonna use this as our object and instance it just a bunch here. So put it into the instance, and then here on the scale, I'm gonna click and drag and bring my scale down till they're just kind of touching like that. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that cube, add a modifier and give it a bevel, and then bring my segments up, right click, shade smooth. Now we have that and you can make your bevel as much as you want, I like this. So we'll click back on the plane and make sure you are selecting this geometry nodes modifier. Now that we have that, what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this cube. I'm gonna get a join geometry node. So shift A, search, join geometry, plug that there, and then we're gonna plug this straight into the join geometry. And there's our little cube. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag and bring my scale up till it passes up what we have. We'll go here to the wireframe view, and there we go. There is our cube we just created. I'm gonna subdivide it and give it three, maybe four vertices, something like that. And we'll do the same thing. So we'll just go ahead and duplicate this instance on points, shift D, drag it down and then we're gonna use the geometry of this in the instance. And then right here on the scale, click and drag, and we'll scale it to be something right around, right around there. That looks pretty good for me. And then now we're gonna do this one more time. So we'll go ahead right here, and we'll go ahead and just duplicate both of these, bring it down, and then we'll plug the geometry into the instance like that and we'll plug this into our join geometry node. So plug that there. And then I'm just gonna go ahead here on the size and bring it up again. And then here on the vertices, let's try five. Five, five looks like it's about appropriate. And then we'll go ahead and get that scaled down till the size we want. And then here on the scale of the cube, we don't want them intersecting like that, it's kind of ugly. So just scale it out they're just barely or yeah just like that so that's good enough maybe get my vertices at six i like that a lot better next thing i'm going to do is actually i want to bring that bevel down on the cube i want them to be a little more round i like the way that looks and then one thing we're going to do is give it some sort of bars so bring this cube down also let's bring this join geometry down and what i'm going to do 
is I'm gonna go ahead and plug this straight into the join geometry. So that's gonna fill it out. And let's make, what we're gonna make is kind of a round wireframe. So let's get a uh, mesh, to, mesh to curves. So mesh to curve right there. Now we can see that wireframe start to happen and we'll do curve to mesh. Curve to mesh, and then we're gonna to need to get a circle. Specifically a circle curve, and that's gonna allow us to use the radius as our round wireframe. So let's bring that radius down to 0 0.009. And there we go. And we can make it a little bit wider. So I'm gonna hold down shift to make it more of a smooth motion. Right about there, that looks really good. And there we go. We've made our geometry nodes mo uh, cube, all of this. Now here's something that's really fun when it comes to shading this. That's what we're gonna do next because it's really, really fun. I'm gonna go ahead and save my scene. I'm gonna call it the Ultra Cube, which I clearly just misspelled. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We have this, let's go ahead and shade it. And this is what's really fun. So let's go ahead and make three materials in this section. So we'll call this material one, we'll click new, make that one. Really we only need two, but I'm gonna use three just for the sake of the lesson. Now each one, I'm gonna give it a different color so we can look at this and then I'll actually change it up later. I just wanna show you the power or just how interesting this is. In a previous tutorial, I was confused as to why geometry nodes set up their materials like this, now I understand. So basically each of these lines is a different model. We technically have four models. This is one solid model, but we have four of them in here in geometry nodes. So what we're gonna do is here in material, we're gonna do set material, just like that. If I click here, we have the selection of materials we just created. So we'll do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this and place it there, get a different one, duplicate that, get a different one, and then we'll go ahead and duplicate this and give it that orange one. There we go. That's how shading and geometry nodes works. Otherwise you would just have one uh, material on the whole thing. This gives you a lot more control, it's really fun. Now let's go ahead and actually give this an interesting material. Uh, uh, we're really just gonna use two materials. So we're just gonna to stick to this blue one and this orange one. So the one on the inside, the big one, is going to be a emissive material. So I'm gonna click on it, go on principled and switch to emission. Right there. And then I'm gonna give it a nice kind of sci-fi looking green, give it a strength of say 60. And then the rest of these are gonna have this blue material, material two. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select material two on all of them. So that looks about right. And we're gonna make that one a metallic material. So let's go here to shading. We have that right here, slot two, that blue material selected. And then we're gonna go ahead and make it white, dark, metallic, and we're gonna get a color ramp. So I'm just gonna zoom in here. And then we're gonna get a noise texture. Make a really basic, uh, Really basic texture. I'm gonna hit Control T with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. If you go to Edit, Preferences, click on Add-ons and type in Node. You're gonna to wanna to enable this modifier right here. It comes with a, not modifier, that add-on right there. Then click on the texture, hit Control T. You're gonna get this texture set up and we're gonna use the object coordinate. That's gonna allow us to evenly place these materials around. So we'll plug this color ramp into the roughness and make sure the noise texture is plugged into the color ramp. So it's gonna duplicate it across the board. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is just make a very fine grain material. So it's not such an obvious instancing. Something like this, we'll bring that color ramp in. Maybe bring that scale down to one. There we go, something like this. And we'll bring this in for a more dramatic look. But what you don't want is an entirely super unique material. There we go, we've created this. And maybe bring that black portion up so it's not perfectly glossy in those black sections. Now I've created this. Let's go hop on over here. I'm going to be using cycles. So I'm gonna get a plane, I'm gonna hit S8, Control A, apply that scale. So I'm gonna use cycles to render this. You can use Eevee. It's gonna look a little different because it's a real-time engine, but um, not everybody can use cycles. So if you wanna follow on cycles, you certainly can. I'm gonna go ahead and so I'm gonna switch my camera here over to cycles here, not my camera, my scene. Now for me, 
in the viewport, I'm gonna give my samples over here at 32, otherwise the video is going to lag. Um, here in my render samples, I'm gonna give myself 800, and then you can denoise it if you like. I hate denoising, I actually enjoy some noise because it is real. Real cameras do give you noise in low light conditions, so I don't see an issue with it. In the camera, I'm gonna hit Shift A, get my camera. Right about here, I'm gonna hit maybe like right about there. Control Alt Zero, snaps the camera to view. And then in the camera settings, right down here, I'm gonna go from perspective to orthographic. And then I can use G to kind of move around my camera and then the orthographic scale like that. And then on my plane, scale it till it fills the scene, Control A, apply that scale. So now we're dealing with this. Let's go ahead and light it a little bit because it's gonna be lit pretty cool. So here in the world, I'm gonna bring this down and then right here on volume, go from none to principled volume and then make their density really low. So something right around here. And then on the object, I'm gonna click on that emission material and give it a strength of like 150. That'll make it much brighter. But in order for the scene to really make sense, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a point light. So I can't really see much. I'm gonna hit Shift A, get a light, point light. I'm gonna hit G and move it right behind my camera. I mean, right behind my object. And then maybe 5,000 on the brightness. That might be too bright, but who knows? No, that's actually just bright enough. And then we'll make it a little bit more blue. There we go. I think it's a little bit too close to the edge. I'm gonna hit G and move it back. There we go, we have that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and shift D and move this over here for more kind of ambient lighting and maybe hit that at like 2000, just like this. So now we have this whole scene. I'm running through this really quickly. When I initially made the design, it was a lot more glossy, which I guess we can do right now. So we'll go back to shading. And then here on slot two, We'll go ahead and make this a lot more shiny. So we'll bring this all the way down, maybe bring this down as well. That's gonna play with your glossiness, which in pretty much will make it look a lot cooler here. And then maybe play with this second point light, give it three, 3000. So there's more reflections here. And there we go, we've kind of created this. Oh, I remember I actually added an area light above it as well. I was wondering why it didn't look that like that. So I'm gonna hit Shift A add an area light, which I need to go back to my layout so I can see this, scale it up, bring it up a lot higher and give it maybe a power of 2000. Oh, that looks way better, okay. Now we're dealing, that's why I put that ambient light to the right, because I was thinking there's not gonna be very many reflections. This looks a lot better. So we can bring this down a little bit if we want, Oop, scaled it. Bring it down just like this. And now we've kind of created the scene. What I would do if I were you is deal with your lighting, play with it to get better reflections. Here on this ground plane, I'm just gonna go ahead and make it really dark and then make it really glossy. So there's some nice reflections here on the ground. And now you've created this really, really cool scene. Um, it's gonna look like this here in Eevee without those Eevee settings turned on. If you're following an Eevee, I'm gonna switch here to Eevee and make sure these settings are turned on. So that's how it's gonna look in Eevee. I would work on the lighting, especially here in Eevee, because it's not, you can't really see what's going on. Um, but in Cycles, big fan of how it looks here in Cycles, and that's how you create this crazy Tesseract thing, whatever you wanna call it. You can have a lot of fun with it. This concept works with any of the primitive objects or any any instance you throw into geometry nodes. So there you go. Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you want to check out real-time materials, it's in the description. Thank you guys for watching.